Hi, this is Shanna. Welcome to Best Practices Measurement 4th Grade. Please take a moment to look at the funny image on the screen. Units, units everywhere. How many times have we felt this before whenever we're talking about all these different units and the kids are like, what is this about? Hopefully we're going to give you some great strategies in this video that are going to help it not seem so overwhelming to students. So here are some of the different pieces that we're going to include in the measurement unit. We're selecting and using appropriate tools to measure attributes of objects, meaning if I'm going to measure length, which of these tools right here do I want to use? Convert within a single system of measurement using um, different units. Solving real world two step word problems involving distances, intervals of time and any combination of the four operations. This may include adding and subtracting fractions with a like denominators and multiplying a fraction and a whole number. So what does student learning look like in the classroom? In this unit, we should see a lot of hands-on experiences happening. We should see students using measurement tools, selecting which tool to use for a specific measurement situation, actually using those tools to convert like you see on the screen now where three feet equal one yard actually getting out those hands-on weights so that they convert one gram to milligrams or whatever other units they're using. Um, but once again, making it a very hands-on experience. We even wanna get out the capacity tools and actually have them figure out, well, how many quarts in a gallon, how many cups in a pint. The more hands-on it is, the more they're gonna understand. And we're also gonna move into having them use clocks to even think about elapsed time as well as how many minutes in an hour, how many hours in a day. But once again, using some kind of tool, maybe even a table to make it a hands-on experience. So what does student learning sound like in the classroom? You might hear, why is it important to correctly label the unit of measurement for an object? And you wanna have students understand that it's a lot different for a length to be an inch than it is in yard. So we have to be precise with those measurements and those labels. How could you explain the process of conversion to a friend? So having kids understand when I'm changing a larger unit to a smaller unit, I'm increasing the number of units. So I might multiply to model that. Or when I'm going from a smaller unit to a larger unit, I need less of those units because they take up more space. So I might divide in that process, or they may even draw a model or use a table to prove the conversions. What are some of the different strategies you use to convert? Like I just said, tables, drawing models, using those hands-on tools. We wanna hear some experiences with that and not them just going straight to the multiplication and division. What do you notice about the relationship between seconds and minutes and minutes and hours? We want them to look for patterns whenever we're talking about measurement units. They should see a lot of 60s happening with time. There's 60 seconds in a minute. There's 60 minutes in an hour and having them make connections between them. Here are some of the vocabulary we wanna hear students using when they're describing measurement within this unit. Customary, metric, unit, length, liquid volume, weight, mass, time. Once again, as students are discussing the math, this is the language we should be hearing both teachers and students using. How will students demonstrate their knowledge? Here are some examples from STEM scopes. You might see um, the, the first one from an explorer with length and where they're using tables, pictures, equations to really look at those conversions. Same thing with the second explorer, we have liquid volume, same strategies. And then you might even see a fluency builder game like conversion dominoes, where they're actually using dominoes to match equivalent amounts and using what they know about converting to prove those matches. Here are some questions to ask to gauge student understanding. What tool and units could I use to measure the length of this object? or weight of this object, capacity, temperature. Students should be able to identify a tool that measures that specific measurement type, and then also discuss what units might be best to use. If you convert the units from seven pounds to ounces, will your answer be greater or less than the original measure? You want students to understand that it's equivalent. 
Ounces are just a smaller unit, so it takes more of them to take up the same amount of space as those seven pounds. And then when solving a word problem, ask what relationship they need to know about to solve the problem. Really having students understand that if I'm doing some kind of conversion with three feet, I probably need to dive into what one foot is and then apply that to what the three feet is. And that can be done once again using those models, using those um, pictures, or even a table. Here's an engaging task or activity for home. This one's called tools for length and weight. Basically, you're gonna to gather tools used to measure length and weight that you have around the house, ruler, yardstick, measuring tape, scale, whatever it is. Have your child choose a tool and tell when he or she would use that tool. Then they can actually practice measuring different items around the house, and you can even extend it to actually have them convert to other units. So just a reminder to some strategies we wanna see, we definitely wanna see those hands-on experiences and kids manipulating converting measures, not just going straight to multiplication or division. Hopefully you got a lot out of the video and we'll see you next time.